What were you expecting to get out of doing this? What did you expect to get from killing Malcolm? Gil. Do you think you would have been made a hero? Actually, at, at that time, um, to uh, kill Malcolm, um, I wasn't thinking in terms necessarily of, of being a hero. I was thinking really in terms of, of doing what uh, I felt uh, had to be done as uh, uh, a member of the uh, Nation of Islam, FOI, uh, accepting the honor of Elijah Muhammad as a messenger of God. I felt that he was being slandered, castigated at that time. And I felt that uh, in doing what I did, what I did, participating in this like I did, I felt that uh, it was only an act of uh, my duty at that time to participate in it. This, is, this was my feelings. Uh, not that I was seeking any kind of heroism or anything like that, but I felt that as a member of the uh, Fruit of Islam, the Nation of Islam at that time, that for me to stand up in regards to what was taking place was the right thing to do. This, is, this was my feelings then. But not now. Now a lot has changed. A lot has changed. We had tried to uh, find out when we could uh, actually uh, carry this out. Uh, one time, I recall, we uh, had passed uh, Malcolm's house. Um, his house was heavily guarded, uh, so uh, it was obvious that uh, nothing could be done at that particular time. Mm -hmm. you know? And it was very difficult to um, say where he would be, whether he would be here, whether he would be there. So um, eventually, uh, we knew that he would be speaking at the uh, Audubon Ballroom. And beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is a place that uh, we could be sure that he would be. And this is how we uh, came to decide that uh, we would uh, carry this out at the Audubon Ballroom. Why would, of all places, you pick the Audubon in full view of hundreds of his followers? Why would you pick such a place? I mean, certainly this was not a kamikaze. You uh, were certainly planning to live through this. One would think that you were really narrowing your chances of longevity and pulling off a deal in front of his followers. I don't know, maybe, maybe there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, but at that time, as I recall it, uh, it was just a, a place, the only place that I, I knew of, that we could be possibly be sure that uh, he would be there. Yeah, and that uh, taking into consideration the number of people and uh, crowd psychology, we thought that we could uh, do this. What do you mean, crowd psychology? Um, the uh, situation uh, of, of a crowd, a lot of people, something happens, confusion is, and things like this here. In the previous visits to the ballroom, uh, what was your purpose? To figure out escape routes? To look, to look the place over. To look the place over and uh, to uh, figure out a plan of action. Tell me where you sat. Down in the front, in the front row, uh, basically on the uh, left-hand side, close to the uh, front of the stage. You mean down around in that area? Yeah, wherever the wherever the rows uh, started, around mm -hmm. down here somewhere. Towards the center aisle. Towards. Mm -hmm. right. Now, when you got there, you all came in the same car. Yes. And three people were on you, another man who had a, a, a pistol, another man who had a shotgun. The fourth person had a smoke bomb. Yes. And the fifth person was unarmed. Yes. Yes. Now, there are <clears throat> exits on either side of the stage. This is the only one in the picture. Was there any plan for anybody to leave by that exit? As I recall, the, the exit was not uh, considered at the time. I don't know uh, whether that was because uh, it was locked or chained or what, but the exit was not considered as uh, a means of leaving. Uh, we thought to leave by going back toward the entrance. Coming back out towards Coming back out toward the entrance that we had came in and moving with the uh, crowd. So tell me exactly what happened that day, when it happened. Uh, we arrived early. Uh, we drifted in uh, two at a time, or one uh, at a time. Uh, 
but going in, you know, uh, not together. Uh, we got there early. Um, I remember uh, Leon and myself coming in early, walking down to the front and taking a seat in the front on the left-hand side, close to the middle aisle. Um, what about this scuffle in the <clears throat> back where somebody had some, his hand in somebody's pocket or something? Well, that was a uh, part of uh, to distract uh, the um, people in regards to at the same time when the, the brother came out to uh, start speaking, the brother would cause a distraction. And uh, during the distraction, the uh, brother who fired the shotgun would fire the shotgun. And uh, that's basically uh, what we did. So your eyes were not on the scuffle that was taken back, the diversionary scuffle, but you were watching Malcolm. Yes. So Malcolm walked out, and he said his greeting. Right. And the next thing you know, you heard <clears throat> the scuffle, and then the man stood up behind you with a shotgun, man, fired man. the shot. Yes. And then you? Myself uh, and the other brother, we just fired. I walked toward the stage a few steps, fired our guns in that direction, broke toward the, uh, the back. Do you remember where you hit Malcolm? No, I don't. How many shots? Did you empty your piece? Uh, no, I don't think I did empty my gun. I fired off a few shots. Fired off a few.